Hey everyone, welcome back to the REST API in-depth series. In this video, we're going to go over a bunch of exercises together to get more practice with post requests in Dino specifically, uh, but generally with REST APIs. In the previous video, we saw a post request for the first time. This was super exciting because we were actually able to reach into the server and uh, change some data, manipulate some data, add some new data to the actual server. So these exercises are really uh, to go beyond a bit of the, the video that we had on the theory to put a bit more practice so we can do things like validation. Um, we'll even have a nice bonus in here, which is quite challenging, um, where we'll do some file uploading. So let's take a look at the exercises together. Okay, so to start, uh, as usual, I have these up on a uh, GitHub, which you can find uh, down in the description uh, below this video. Uh, so feel free to get, grab it from GitHub. You can either use Git or you can uh, copy and paste uh, from the website there and just kind of grab it from there. Or you can just follow along with the video. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you um, a bit of explanation. I have the bonus open. I didn't want to give that away, uh, but hopefully you didn't get too much time to read that through there. Uh, I, I'm excited to get to the bonus, so I, I should have had the warm up open first. So I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get started uh, with the warm up. I'll give you a chance uh, after uh, I explain each, each exercise to pause the video and give it a chance yourself. Um, but uh, let's go through the warm up to get started. So. For the warm up, I'd like you to create a, a new Dino workspace because we're going to be using Dino uh, as we've been doing in this series so far uh, and respond to any post request. So you're going to check the method of the request with a 201 status code, regardless of the route. So don't worry about any URL pattern or anything like that. Uh, just respond directly with a 201 if it's a post request. Any other method such as uh, get put post, uh, sorry, not post, get put patch uh, delete uh, should be a, a 404, for example. Um, then what I want you to do is add a JSON body uh, to your post request. Uh, we're going to be using Insomnia again in this uh, video, but any REST API client should do. So add a JSON body in there, some keys and values, um, and then log out the content of that uh, JSON body uh, as part of your um, kind of uh, the, the response. So uh, when the response or when the request comes in, respond with the 201, but right before you respond, uh, just log out the body just so you can see it in the console. You need to respond with the body, but just log it out so we can actually test that we actually know how to grab the response out of that request body. So test that in Insomnia once you get that working um, and uh, I'll give you a chance to try this out yourself and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so uh, to start, uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a new file here. Uh, I'll just call this uh, warmup.ts. Um, and I'll open my terminal here, just make sure I have that ready. Okay, great. Uh, I wonder how big or small I should make that. I think that, that, that should be fine. I think you should be able to see that. Um, I'll do control shift P or command shift P here. I'll type Dino in a VS code and there should be Dino enable. I'll do that and that'll create this uh, Dino settings folder here. Uh, and I'll just say Dino enables true just so that I have my language server started for Dino. You can see in the bottom right uh, where it's saying I'm using uh, the version of Dino and all the um, autocomplete and nice stuff will come up as a result of that as well. So uh, just to get this started, I'll just do an async function. I'll call this handler as I normally do. I should really start calling it something different uh, later on, but we'll stick with that just for consistency. Um, and I'll do Dino serve and I'll just use the default uh, ports here, uh, which is going to be uh, 8,000. Um, and in this case, we need to make sure we uh, return a response, which is why it's complaining. So we want to return a new response. By default, I'll just do a null response there. So no body. Um, and I'll say it's a 404 um, status. Oops. Uh, status is going to be a 404 not found. So uh, that's going to be our uh, kind of base setup here. We do want to check for post requests though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to do what I always do, which is kind of a parse the URL nicely. So I'm going to say const URL is equal to a new URL constructor. I'm going to pass in out of the request object the actual URL um, uh, value itself. And we'll have all the nice uh, broken apart values of that URL in here. Um, and I'll say if the uh, URL uh, or if Actually, I guess I don't really need the URL in this case. See, I, I just get in the habit of doing these things, which is why the muscle memory really helps. Um, but if the request.method uh, is equal to uh, post, uh, then we want to do something in here, which is not return the 404. So here we want to return a new response, and this is going to be null. And I'll just say this is going to be status of um, 201, which is going to be technically in this case, we're not actually creating anything. Uh, because we don't have a file to create uh, stuff on. Uh, but uh, in the future exercises, we will. So maybe this should be like a 200. But just to get in the practice of doing 201s, because that's generally what we're going to do with post requests, um, I, I just put that in there. So uh, just, just be aware that really does mean that record was created. Um, 
which we're not doing in this exercise. So, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, I could probably make URL pattern with this, but I'll just keep it with uh, what we have for the warm up. Um, and I think in the warm up, I said I wanted uh, us to also uh, log out the request body if there is any. So let me just get this started first, and then I'll, I'll uh, get the, the body logged out right after. So I'll switch back to warm up here. I'll open my terminal. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right folder, uh, and I am. A lot of files in there, which we'll be using for the future exercises. So I'll run dino uh, run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash net, uh, and I'm going to be running uh, the warmup.ts. So there we go. Uh, that's going to get us started here. I'm just going to copy that URL here. I'll switch to insomnia, um, and here I'll just add a new HTTP request, um, and I'll just paste that URL in there. And uh, I'm just going to send uh, off a, a get request first, and we should get a 404 not found. If I send off a post request, uh, hopefully I get a 201 created. So that's working correctly. That's pretty nice. Um, so the only thing left really is to log out the body if there is a body. So um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const body is equal to recall from the previous videos that we know that our um, body for our request in this case is a JSON API is what we're creating. So we're just going to make the assumption that this is going to be a JSON body. So I can just do this directly in Dino and it's going to take the response stream, read its completion, return a promise that resolves with the result of <laughs> result of parsing the body text as JSON. Um, so this is going to be a promise. So I do want to await this. Um, and uh, that's going to work because we're in an async function. Uh, and then what I can do is I can console.log uh, console.log out to that uh, body there. I'm going to probably just put that directly in the console log, but just so you can see that uh, kind of separated out. So to actually get that working, I'm going to go over to the body tab here in Insomnia. I'm going to choose a JSON body. We're going to be working with a multi-part form later, but we'll do JSON for now. Um, and I'll just say, uh, for example, maybe I'll just put a name and I'll put a uh, monkey, uh, my, my favorite uh, animal. Uh, and I'll click send there and I still get back to 201, which is great. If I switch back over to VS Code, we can see that we do have that parsed out as JSON for the body, uh, which is coming directly from our request, which is beautiful. So there you have it. That is the warm up. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Um, let's just get in our uh, hands warmed up uh, to get ready for the next exercises. Let's take a look at exercise one next together. All right. So for this exercise, uh, a lot of instructions. So let me uh, read through this uh, and then uh, you can try it out. So uh, again, if you haven't created a Dino workspace, you're starting with this exercise, go ahead and do that. Um, I want you to create a forest.json file uh, with an array with one object in it with this information. So that uh, single object in that array is gonna have an ID uh, of one, uh, a type property of uh, the string moose and a count property of the number 30, okay? So just that one uh, object in that array uh, of JSON for this forest.json file. Then I'm going to create a route for slash animal using the URL pattern API and use it to test for post requests for that post method specifically. Um, and then uh, I want you to use insomnia to create a post request with the JSON body for a new animal. Uh, choose whatever your favorite animal is um, and uh, give it a type uh, like we had moose up here, but different type and, and account as well to create that new animal in the forest.json file. Then on uh, the Dino side, on the back end, on the server side, I'd like you to uh, in your handler accept this request and um, save the new animal to the forest.json because recall that the point of a post request is really to uh, create a new resource on our backend, on our server, in our database in this case, which is our text file. So go ahead and add that to the forest.json file and then respond with the newly created animal uh, with a 201. So make sure to add a unique ID for each new animal that's being added. You can either kind of just go in order like two, three, four, five, or just generate a random number. Honestly, don't worry too much about the ID part, just generate something that's a number that has a, uh, it's probably not going to clash. If it does clash like one in a hundred or one in a thousand chance, it doesn't really matter for this exercise. Um, I'm just going to be using math.random and, and I'm going to use a floor on that. Um, okay. Uh, and then test this in insomnia, try a few animals, make sure it works and make sure they actually get saved to the file. Um, and uh, also make sure that you actually get back the response in JSON in insomnia as well. So quite a lot going on with this one, this is kind of the entire cycle of uh, making a request, uh, the, the post request being received by a server, parsing that request, actually uh, saving it to a file, and then um, 
or committing it basically to a file and then responding with that newly created resource successfully to the client. So give that a shot. Uh, it might take a little while and then we'll go through it together. All right, so I'm gonna create a new file here. I'll just call this ex1.ts. And uh, I'll, I'll just start off what I really have normally here, async uh, function handler. This is gonna be a request and this is gonna be type request just like that, just so we have some nice autocomplete. Um, and just uh, for fun, I'll just do return a new response in here, just so I don't forget, null uh, status uh, 404. Okay, uh, hopefully like this muscle memory is really kicking in for you. Um, and, and you really get a sense of kind of what this whole backend thing is, is kind of all about and how we respond to requests. So I'm going to serve that up to my Dino serve. Um, and uh, that's going to take care of all the, the ports and uh, the networking for us. So that's nice. Now, we do want to uh, have a pattern in this case. So I'm going to do the, the whole URL thing again. I'm going to say new URL for our request.url. And I'm going to say const, uh, I guess, create animal animal route is equal to a new URL pattern. And this is going to be a path name of slash, what did I say? Animal, I think it was. Um, so uh, we'll have that at least. And we'll say if, uh, if the uh, create animal route uh, testing against our URL is, is correct. So if we are indeed uh, posting to slash, or in this case, animal, but we also want to check for post. So, uh, and the request is a post. So the method of that request is equal to post. Uh, then we are going to in here, uh, create a, uh, a new animal. All right, so that's kind of uh, the setup that we have over here. I am going to uh, switch over to create that file really quick. So I'm gonna go over to exercise one. I'm gonna copy this right here, just so you don't have to watch me type that out. I don't make a mistake. ID one uh, type moose count uh, 30. Beware that this is JSON, so you do want the quotes around the um, the property names. So I'm gonna create a new file here. I'll call this forest.json. And uh, I'm gonna have an array and I'm gonna put that single value in that array to start. Um, it's gonna get reformatted, I guess, but really hopefully you can see that this is an array because we're gonna be adding values uh, to this uh, JSON list, okay? So we have that uh, for us.json ready. Uh, let's take a look at what we're gonna do next. So we have uh, we have this part done, we have that part done. Uh, now we're gonna go to Insomnia, create a post request with the JSON body for a new animal type count property. Uh, remember no ID, that's gonna be done on the back end. So um, I'm going to say to slash animal here, uh, cause the port is gonna remain the same. Um, and in this JSON body, I need a type. Um, so I'm gonna go with monkey, I'll just do lowercase here. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna say uh, account as well. Uh, how many monkeys do I want in my forest? Um, let's just say I want a thousand monkeys uh, because the monkeys are the best. So uh, the more, the better. We can't have too many. Um, so let's go with a thousand monkeys. Uh, and the ID again, recall, is not here. We're going to be adding that on our server side as soon as this gets posted off to uh, to Dino in this case. So that's uh, that's ready. Uh, and then what we're going to do now is kind of the uh, the the, the I guess the tricky part, the uh, the main part of this exercise, which is how do we accept this um, accept this body and the request? Uh, how do we kind of get that into JSON, add it to our array, and then send it back with an ID uh, to our client? So we kind of this is a lot going on in this step five here, but let's give it a shot. So um, if I come back in here, the first thing I need to do is grab the actual body. So as I'm doing this, I I do want to kind of mention that. Um, I'm skipping over some of the kind of nitty gritty things like uh, checking for errors and validation. We're gonna do some validation next exercise, uh, but there is some things you'd eventually want us to add to this. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do the kind of like quick and dirty way just so you can see this working uh, because that's really the most important part from a uh, kind of a learning perspective and, and to really get your hands uh, kind of uh, comfortable doing this. But eventually you would wanna do things like test for validation, make sure the types are correct, uh, you know, make like kind of we're doing a little bit of here to making sure it's really a post request um, and making sure that the route matches all that kind of stuff we'd want to really start doing in a bit more depth and a bit more careful. But we're, we're pretty we're pretty close. We just have to do a bit more stuff if we really wanted to um, kind of make this uh, production ready, I guess. So I say const body uh, is equal to uh, await in this case, the request dot uh, JSON because we know it's JSON. So it's another thing that we want to test for make sure if it's not JSON, for example, um, then uh, we would probably throw an error or we tell them politely to please send us JSON or valid JSON. Um, so that's something we want to test for. Um, we wouldn't want to just crash our Dino server in this case. 
Um, now, what else do we need? So we have our body. We need a way to actually grab the data in this file uh, and then uh, kind of add this uh, body to it. So instead of saying body here, what I'll probably do is I'll just call this animal just so it's a little bit more intuitive um, kind of like while we're actually writing this code as to what we're really doing. Because really, if you think about it, this should be the animal, again, assuming that it really is correctly formatted. So I'm going to say const file is equal to uh, dino.read uh, text file. Uh, again, this is going to be a weighted. I could do this sync version, but I'll just do a wait here. Um, and uh, we're going to be reading our forest.json. This is assuming we're in the same folder as this uh, exercise one file that I'm running right now, which we are in this case. So just make sure you have that. Then I'm going to say const animals is equal to uh, json.parse. We're going to take that string of that file and turn it into an actual JSON object. Then I want to add that animal. Uh, to the end of this list of animals. So how do we do that? Well, I can just use um, array uh, spreading. Um, I'll just say, um, or I'll, I'll do let here just so that we can kind of reuse uh, animals here. Uh, and I'll say animals is equal to, I'm going to take everything in animals previously, spread it out. I can also do concat, um, whichever you kind of prefer. I'm going to add my animal to the end there. Um, but before I do that, uh, recall that this animal object um, doesn't have an ID, right? If you think about it, if we go back to insomnia, this has no ID, but our uh, forest file does have an ID for each channel. So we need to generate that ID. So let's, let's, let's not forget to do that. So uh, what I, I guess I could do that. Uh, maybe where, where can I do that? I'll do it right here. Maybe I'll say const uh, ID is equal to, I'll just do this. I'll do math.floor math.random uh, and I'll just do between like zero and a uh, thousand, I guess in this case. Um, and I'll, um, where, where's my animal? I'll change this to a let as well. You know what, maybe it makes more sense to do this. I'll, I'll move this uh, ID up here uh, and I'll say uh, animal is equal to, I'm gonna take uh, everything in animal previously, uh, but I'm gonna add the ID on the front just like that. So it's gonna, um, it's gonna have uh, the ID uh, in the front and then the type and the count right after that. Um, perfect. So uh, there's our uh, there's our new animal there, and that gets added to this animals list. And we want to save that back to the file. There's a lot of code going on, so I'm going to go through this um, kind of as a recap. Uh, but uh, let, let's go ahead and save that. So I'll say uh, Dino dot write uh, write text file, and this is going to be um, to our forest dot json. And what do we want to write to that file? Well, we want to write our uh, JSON dot string. If I remember every time we can't save JSON directly to a file, we have to save text to a file in this case, text file. Um, so we want to make sure it's a string, um, of our JSON in this case animals. Um, and we can, I, I guess we can await that. Um, and almost cut off with my head there. And, uh, what we can do here is now we can return a new response and the, uh, the, the body of this response, what I can probably do here is I'll actually take this line. Uh, and I'll say uh, const, uh, I guess, return body is equal to that. Um, and I'll just put that in here instead, just so I can uh, add that here as well. Return body. Um, and this is going to be a status of 201. Technically, I should also have a headers on here uh, and say application uh, type uh, for for this as well. So let me, let me kind of do that here just so you can see. I'll say headers, uh, headers. That's going to be uh, app uh, or what is it? Content, content type. Uh, uh, these are all things that, by the way, that other frameworks automatically do for you, but you do have to do manually if you're doing this from scratch. But it's important to know what they're doing uh, because uh, that's how you learn. Um, so there you go. So that is the full thing. We're sending back a 201 uh, as a JSON content type. Um, okay. So a lot going on here. Uh, let's test if that works. I have I just kind of wrote all that code out. We have, we normally you want to test it as you go. Uh, so uh, we probably would want to you know do some logging along the way. But um, I think that that should be okay. It should be a pretty long video if I kept logging everything. So let's just kind of go with what I have here. Um, I'll say Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash um, net dash dash allow dash read dash dash allow dash write because we are reading. 
uh, right over, where are we reading? We're reading here and we're writing right over here. Okay, so we, we need read and write privileges which are separate from each other. Um, as you can imagine, uh, they, they write is a little bit more uh, privilege heavy. Um, so we have watch, net, read, write, and then we just need the file name in this case, ex1.ts. Um, so fingers crossed that, that works with no errors and it does. And if I switch, uh, let me just kind of clear that terminal so we can see what's happening in here. Um, I should probably, uh, I guess I don't really have to log it. Uh, we're gonna get that back um, in our insomnia and in our file. So fingers crossed, post request to 8,000 slash animal. This is our monkey with a count of 1,000, which is currently not in that forest.json file. If I click send, um, look at that. So I actually kind of messed this up. I actually sent back all the animals. I should have probably only sent back uh, the animal, the single animal, the the monkey. So I kind of, I, I got that right, uh, but uh, I messed up this part here. So um, I don't want to send back everything here. Um, I, I guess technically, uh, I, I could have probably just left this here now that I think about it. I was trying to find the wrong thing. Um, so what I want to return back is this single animal, not not all the animals. I just want to return the animal that I that I added. So um, let, let me fix that here. So I'll say json.stringify of my single animal. So hopefully you caught that. I'll save that so the server restarts there. Um, uh, now the file itself is fine. As you can see that, that it got correctly added in there. Uh, I didn't capitalize monkey. Uh, so that's okay. And it has an ID of 876, which is fine. Uh, but we, uh, when we're returning from a post request, we don't want to return the entire collection um, or the entire like set of resources. We just want to return the one that was created. So that was the mistake that I made here, just a singular animal that we created with that ID. Um, so let's try it with a different animal here. If I switch back to insomnia, um, let's just try, uh, I'll add some, let's go with some frogs. Um, not too many frogs, maybe, maybe, I don't know, um, maybe seven of them. Why not? Uh, and I'll click send. Um, and look at that. We get an ID of 502. The type is frog and we have seven frogs. And if I switch back to, uh, my forest.json uh, and I save this file, just sort formats, we see that that is saved in there. And now, even if I restart my server, uh, this information is, uh, committed and saved to this file, which is quite nice. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that is the first exercise. Quite a lot going on. Let me do a quick recap on here because um, I didn't write enough comments, uh, but hopefully the flow of this makes sense. I just want to kind of go through this part really quick. So the request is going to come in. We're going to make sure it's the right route. We're going to make sure it's a post request. Uh, it's going to be turned into JSON. The body, which is this part uh, right here, is going to be turned into, uh, we're going to grab that JSON. Uh, once we have that, we're going to we're going to generate an ID and add that to the front of the JSON. So if you think about it, what we're doing is basically generating this and creating this out of this. Right. So we're going from left to right, kind of uh, just so we can add that ID because it's a server's job to create the ID. Uh, we're going to uh, read our database file in this case, our JSON file. Uh, we're going to parse it into JSON. We're going to add it to that file uh, using um, concatenation here. Um, and then we're going to uh, write it back to the file and then return that response that it was created with a 201 and the correct headers. So if you think about the flow of this, that is literally pretty much the flow of everything on a server, right? We, we, we get a request, we do something with the request. We, a lot of stuff, usually like validation, parsing, uh, a bunch of stuff with the request. Um, then we commit it or we save it somewhere. Um, and once we're done with that, then we can respond. Right. That, that's like the, the circular kind of flow in general that you want to think of when you're working with these types of tools. Perfect. Let's take a look at exercise two together. All right. So um, this one is going to be uh, very, very similar to exercise one. In fact, I'm actually going to copy a bunch of the code. I normally don't do that. But in the uh, sake of time, I do want to copy the code. So we have time because I have a bonus as well, which is going to be pretty intense. Um, so um, I will kind of quickly go over it, though, as I copy it. But uh, it's going to be very similar to exercise one uh, with one small distinction here. I say small, but one distinction. So I'm going to look for a start to finish just so it makes sense if you're seeing this for the first time. Uh, create an Arduino project, uh, create a forest.json file with an array with a single object in it. In this case, same same object that we saw in exercise one, uh, an ID property, type property, and account property. Um, the ID is a, a number, type is a string, and count is a number. Uh, then create the route for slash animal using the URL pattern API again, and test for post requests, very similar to uh, exercise one. Um, 
Use Insomnia to create that post request, add a JSON body again, same thing, no difference there inside Insomnia for the type and account property. So you can create a new animal in your forest JSON file. Um, now the difference is that before we do that uh, response, before we uh, actually uh, commit it to our uh, text file, we need to do some data validation. So we'll just get some practice with that. So what do I mean? I want you to add data validation uh, to the count property to do two things. One is to um, make sure that it's required. So we need to make sure that count exists as a property and also to check if it's a valid integer. Because imagine if we uh, tried to submit a count that was like a string uh, or something else like a Boolean value, right? And we want to make sure that's actually a number. Okay. So um, if it's if it's not, then I want you to send back an error in JSON format. So for example, if it's missing a, the field altogether, there's no count at all, which you should test for, then uh, send back an object a JSON uh, with a, a value that kind of looks like this. Um, and uh, I'll let you Google what the error code should be. We'll do that together as well. Um, but uh, if it has a count, but it's not an integer, then you should send back this error. Now, this is not the best way to do errors. I'm just slowly easing up until how we do better and better errors, but this is pretty close to how you'd see errors uh, in, in practice in real life uh, with just some slight modifications. Okay, so this is really the core of this exercise is a data validation. I just realized I repeated step five here. <laughs> it should be six and seven. Um, so uh, then once you have that, the rest of the steps are the same. Uh, just grab that on Dino, uh, save the animal to forest.json, respond with the 201 or the correct uh, error response if it didn't pass validation and don't create the object um, and generate an ID for it and then test it in Insomnia. Make sure that once you actually do submit the correct um, animal, it does get saved. Test these error conditions. Make sure that you uh, try a submission with no count field. Try a submission where there is a count field, but it's not an integer like a string, for example, and a test that those actually get back the correct error responses and not a 201. You don't want to actually create anything um, or add anything to our text file. So give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. Okay. So uh, I'll create a uh, ex2 file. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, actually copy and paste my uh, ex1 file um, and uh, I'll just call that uh, ex2.ts. Uh, everything is going to be the same uh, except for the validation. Okay, so again, normally I don't do this, but it's it's literally the same same route, uh, the same file, uh, and uh, most of these steps are going to be the same. The only difference we're going to see is we're going to code together. So just in case you didn't see this yet, um, we have our handler. We're serving up our handler. Anything that's not a post request or hitting our route is going to return a 404. Uh, and then our, uh, the crux of this is really uh, this section right here, which is uh, we're parsing it as a URL. We're creating our URL pattern. We're testing that it is matching our pattern in a post request. Um, then we're doing the real logic right here, um, which we just did an overview of uh, earlier at the end of exercise two. Okay, so um, the order here is going to matter. So let, let's see how we're going to work through this. Now, I want to be able to do exactly what I had before with the correct values. Um, so this does that. Now, if I right now as is, if I send uh, in Insomnia a value that doesn't have a count, it's actually still going to save. And that's a problem. That's what we're trying to uh, address with the validation. So what we need to do is figure out what is really inside this value right here. What is actually inside that JSON body and do some validation on it before we really do anything else. Because if you think about it, if that data is invalid, if, if the data coming in is invalid, it doesn't actually make any sense to do really any of this, right? It, why would we read the file and then write the file and then stringify and all that stuff um, if, if we know that it's invalid data in the first place? We should check this animal, uh, uh, JSON, to make sure that the that it's valid. And if it's invalid, then we can immediately return uh, and exit this uh, kind of function uh, with a early, early return, very similar to we have here, but with the, the correct um, error status code. So, so let, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say I'm going to validate the animal uh, for count and uh, I guess count being integer. All right, so how do we do that? Um, 
to start, I guess let's validate that count is actually there. So how, how are we going to do that? Well, um, there's a few ways to do that. We could use the in operator for objects because this is now an object, but I'm going to actually do the, um, the probably more correct way, which is the uh, checking if it has a property. So I'm going to say const has count is equal to object dot has own, uh, or, uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's has own, uh, I thought it was has own property, but I guess that's the same thing. Um, I'll have to double check that has own property. Um, and, uh, I'm going to pass in, uh, the animal object and, uh, the property key that we're looking for. So has own is going to determine whether an object has a property with the specified name. So I want to check if animal has the count property. Okay. Now, another way you could technically do this is, uh, like if, um, I think it goes like this. I think it's like count uh, in animal. Now this checks the entire prototype chain. So if that's a very long chain, it's very time consuming and there's some other bugs that can pop up if you do it this way. So you should definitely be using the has own property uh, or the, the has own here in this case, uh, which is the same thing. Um, so uh, make, make sure that you're, you're careful with that. Now, if it does have count, uh, then that's great. But if it doesn't have count, so if it doesn't, uh, has count, uh, that, that's some weird English there. Uh, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to return, uh, we want to return a new response. And in this response, uh, we need to return uh, an error, right? So if we go back to exercise two here, we want to return this error right here. Error count field is, uh, is required. So I'll just copy that. Um, and I'll go back to ex2 and I'll say const uh, error, uh, is equal to uh, that object right there. And then uh, actually what I'll do is I'll do um, json.stringify of this object. This is almost going off the screen here, but hopefully you can kind of see that. So uh, we can't send um, we can't send this uh, JSON object directly. We have to stringify it. Uh, so we, we need to make sure that that's um, a string. And then we can send that error right here. I could have done that directly in here as well. Uh, but now the difference is uh, we need to figure out the status code. So if I go back to uh, my browser, um, I'm just going to say, um, uh, I guess I'll say post request error status code. Um, so these are some ways that we can actually learn about some of the status codes. I mentioned the 201 means that a post, uh, it was created, uh, but a 200 uh, is generally an okay, a generic kind of message. 404 means not found. Let's go to this uh, HTTP response status codes on MDN uh, and take a look. So um, if we go to the client error messages, because our client is the one that's making this error message, it's not the server's fault in this case, it's the client fault, uh, client's fault. Um, uh, this is one way to do this. I'll show you another way in a second that you can look this up. So you can probably look through these. Um, uh, there's bad requests. It cannot process the request through something uh, malformed request syntax. That sounds pretty right. So maybe a 400, not really unauthorized. It doesn't make sense. Forbidden, not found. It's not, it's not really any of these. Uh, one other thing that we can probably do is I'll just search for uh, post requests on MDN. And if we go to the post page for HTTP on the MDN web docs, um, I think if you uh, scroll down, uh, what you should see, or let, let's see here, we have, uh, where is it? Uh, a lot of really nice information. Um, there should be a, so it's talking about put and post as well. So uh, this is something I didn't want to bring up, uh, although uh, I encourage you to read about is item potency, which is a really fancy word. Um, and it's very important when it comes to REST APIs, but we'll talk about it very briefly um, in, in a very practical manner later on. Uh, let's see, do they have any info here? So here are some examples. You can see that uh, this is, uh, I don't wanna spend too much time on this one. This is giving away uh, our next one. Uh, do we have a request methods? Uh, so here's post. I think that's a, the, the page that we were just on. Um, oh, it should be on here somewhere. I, I think it was on here somewhere. I encourage you to read through MDN. I don't want to spend too much time clicking through stuff on here, uh, but it gives you a good summary of kind of how post request works as well, um, as well as some of the other methods that we're going to go through and kind of what the general cycle looks like along with their status code here. So I'm just going to use this, which is a bad request 400. The server cannot or will not process the request due to something that is perceived to be a client error, malformed request syntax. So this is really the thing that um, I'm interested in is a malformed request syntax. There's something wrong with this syntax being sent uh, by the client. So I'm going to put that status in here. Status is um, 400. 
uh, as well as the headers. Uh, oops, headers. He ah, can't spell headers is going to be uh, content type. And this is going to be uh, application slash JSON. Perfect. So there we go. Um, so this is going to early return. We're never going to get past um, this section here if there's no count. So let, let's test if that works. So if I switch over to uh, my terminal here, I'm going to run uh, Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow. I'm going to put these in here for now just because I know I'm going to be using them. Allow read dash dash allow dash uh, write and uh, dash dash allow dash net uh, of ex2.ts. Uh, and there we go, we're on 8,000. Um, so to test that this works, what I'm gonna do is not include a count property and see what happens. So if I go to Insomnia, uh, what animal should I add? Let's just say I want to add a wolf. Um, and let's just say there are two wolves uh, in, uh, oh, actually, there's no, there's no wolves. I'm gonna get rid of the count uh, completely. Um, and uh, the comma as well, because that's not valid JSON. So I'm only gonna put the type. I'm not gonna have a count, uh, and I'm gonna see if I get a 20, uh, 201, a 400, or a 404. So if I click send, nice, I get a 400. Check it out, error count field is required, beautiful. So um, now if I go back to my forest.json, uh, there is no uh, wolf in here, right? Because uh, it, it was an early return, we never got to the part of our code uh, where we were actually doing this stuff right here, which is saving it to the file, um, because we early returned right here. So now we need to do the same thing, uh, but for uh, checking uh, if it's an integer. So if there is a count, uh, we want to make sure that count is an integer. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we know that this uh, is an object. So I'll say uh, I'll say const count is equal to animal, uh, and then I want to grab the count, and I'll say if the type of the count. Uh, well, I guess I could do type of, but pr uh, that, that's probably not correct because type of actually gives me a, a number here. So I want to specifically test for an integer because they shouldn't be allowed to have like a 1.5 wolves. I don't want to allow that for my system. So I'm going to say uh, number dot is integer, uh, which uh, you can look up on MDN as well. Uh, it's a pretty uh, common function uh, for returning true if the value passed in as an integer or false otherwise. So if number is integer of this count, uh, which we just grabbed out of here. And we know that it's in here because it, it won't pass here unless it's actually there, okay? So uh, we can safely check for count after this uh, this uh, check right here. So uh, if the number is not an integer, so if not number is integer for count, then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna copy this code right here and just modify it slightly. So I'm gonna do a copy there, I'm gonna do a paste here, and I'm gonna say, uh, I think, I forgot the error. What, what was the error? Uh, it was uh, count field need uh, needs to be an integer. <laughs> That's an S there. Uh, count field needs to be an integer. So I'll just copy that. I'll go back to exercise two. Uh, count field needs to be an integer. There we go. Um, so that is the error message right there. You should be able to see that. And uh, we can use error here again because of the scope differences between these if blocks, which is the nice thing about const and let. Um, and uh, I can send that back again, a 400 uh, application JSON, uh, and that's all the same. The only difference is the actual error message, okay? Now, in practice, we would we kind of want to do this uh, like in series and make sure that we're giving all the error information back in one go instead of just like one at a time like this, uh, but we'll leave that for future uh, videos and exercises. So. Uh, this here is checking for having count at all required. Uh, this here is checking that it's an integer. If we pass all of those, then we can do the same thing from before, uh, which is from exercise two, which is actually generating the ID, adding it to the animals, reading in the file, uh, saving it back to the file and responding with the actual added animal. So let me come back here and uh, I'll open up my uh, insomnia and I'll add a count field. But this time what I'll do is I'll add hello as my count, okay? So I expect to get a 400 again, but the error message should be different. Um, so I'll make sure I, I save this file, <laughs> and I did, uh, and I'll click a send and check it out. I get back a 400 count field needs to be an integer if I switch back to uh, my VS code uh, and I check my forest, it is not in there. That wolf did not get saved correctly. 
Um, and if I even do a number, but uh, this is why type of wouldn't work. If I do a number that is a uh, like a floating point number, like just say like 1.23 and I send that off, uh, I get the same message, which is really nice. The only way this will work is if I actually send an actual number, which is an integer like one in this case, and I click a send and look at that. I do get back a 201 created for my wolf with a brand new ID and account. And if I switch back to VS code that has actually been successfully added to the end of our forest.json. Phew, okay, that was a lot. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, there's a lot of code going on really for this exercise. It comes down to this code right here. So maybe give it a pause uh, and take a look through it, but I'll just go through it really quick. Um, we want to check in this case, if there is a count property uh, and we're doing that using has own sending back an error if it's not in there. We want to check in this case for the type validation. In, in practice, you usually would have much more type validation than this using regex and some other things. Uh, but in this case, this, uh, this suffices for exactly what we need, which is checking it's an integer, which is great. Um, and uh, in this case, it's uh, checking to see if uh, not, not a decimal number, not a string, not a Boolean, uh, it can be successfully converted to an integer number. Uh, then we actually, um, save it correctly with the code below this. Otherwise, we uh, early return as well with an error message. So there you go. Pretty cool. Um, you can imagine before we go to the uh, next exercise that there's usually a lot of this type of validation that goes on. Think think about how this can make like this is just our entire handler for our entire server. Um, this is just one route. Uh, for one type of validation. Um, you can imagine this can get very kind of hairy very quickly. Usually what you'd want to do is make a bunch of functions um, and validate inside those functions and just import them into your files. But we'll see that once we get to larger projects. Okay, let's take a look at exercise three together. This is probably going to be a bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to put some good practice in here for all of you. Okay, Oof. so uh, for exercise three, uh, I'd like you to create a, a new Dino project if you haven't already. Um, create a heroes.json file with an array with one object. So very similar to forest.json, just we're going to go a different theme here. In this case, we're going to have an ID, which is a number, a name, which is a string, in this case, Batman, and then a cool property, which is a Boolean uh, false. So if you like Batman and I insulted you, I'm very sorry. Um, I do think there are cooler heroes than Batman, although Batman's pretty cool, uh, but they're, in my opinion, um, can be kind of lame. Uh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. So um, then uh, what I want you to do after that is create a route for uh, slash hero uh, and listen for post requests, just like we saw in our um, animals. Uh, and once you have that, this is where uh, things get a little bit fun. So we're going to use insomnia to create a post request um, for a, uh, with, with the body for a new superhero uh, with a name uh, and a cool property to create that new hero. So in this case, remember, it's not type and count. It's just name and cool. Um, and uh, the difference here is that instead of using a JSON body, uh, I want you to set the body to a different type, which is multi-part form. Okay, I'll show you how to do that in Insomnia as we go through this exercise, but I want you to give that a shot. This is a, one of the different types of encodings that we saw in the previous video. Um, and this is generally how forms get submitted and how we can do other fancy things like submit binary data as well. So change it from a JSON body type to a multi-part form type and uh, use that as your submission. I want you to log out the text in the body of the request. Take a look at what it looks like. Also look in the timeline view uh, of Insomnia, uh, which you'll see uh, kind of by the request or by the response. Um, area and you can look through it to find the body of the request and take a look at what it looks like in there uh, both ways to see if they match and, and look at what you think is interesting in there. Um, once you have all that done, I want you to accept that request on the Dino's um, server side uh, on that route, save the hero to the heroes.json uh, file. I think I misspelled this uh, here, heroes heroes.json file um, and uh, res respond with the, the, the hero that you actually created um, and make sure to create a unique ID just like we did for our animals. Test an insomnia with some new heroes, actually save them correctly, uh, make sure they uh, show up in the file. Uh, and then I want you to ask yourself, what's the difference between doing this style of multi-part form request uh, versus the just regular JSON body that we had in, in the in the previous ones. Also, maybe you can try URL encoded, which is another option, and see if it still works the same way as a multi-part form and what the differences might be. Um, so give that a shot. 
uh, the, uh, the trick here is try to think of just how we parsed the uh, body of the uh, request as JSON. Think of how you'd parse it uh, as, in this case, form data, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So uh, take a look at that. A lot going on with this one, definitely more challenging. Spend some time with it, and then we'll go through it together. OK, so I'm going to create a new file. I'll do ex3.ts. i do the same thing here, async, uh, async function, hand function. Uh, handler, uh, this is a request of type request. We're going to return a new response, and this is going to be a status of uh, 404 in this case. Uh, and I want to do dino.serve of our handler, um, and I'll save that. Um, we want to create our uh, route here, so I'll say const URL is equal to a new URL of our request.url, uh, and I'll say const, um, I'll say uh, hero or create hero route is equal to a new URL pattern. And the path name for this is going to be uh, slash hero. I think that's what I said, right? Slash, slash hero. Yeah, there we go. Um, and uh, we're going to say if the uh, create hero route uh, matches, so tests uh, against our URL correctly, and the request method uh, is equal to a post, Remember, only post requests for this uh, exercise. Then we're going to come inside here. And then we can uh, create our hero. All right. Now, um, this is where things get fun. Uh, let me let me start my server actually behind the scenes here. So I'll uh, command C here, and I'll say uh, Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash read dash dash allow dash uh, write dash dash uh, allow <laughs> dash net uh, ex3.ts um module not found oops uh, i didn't put my file there so uh thank you dino uh wait module not found why module not found i did save the file as ex3.ts uh oh i see i see the issue my uh my allow see i get too excited here uh when i'm typing this oh my goodness oh my goodness i I'm getting too too excited here. Allow dash net. I, I put a space by accident, so um, be careful with that. I thought that that was a file name. So if I do that, you can see that now it's being started as my my server. Um, always good to see those fun errors that pop up once in a while. Okay, um, so uh, now we have our uh, route set up. Let's just take a look at what we want to do next. We want to go to Insomnia, create our post request, but change the the body type. Uh, to be uh, that I forgot to create my file, so I should probably actually do that. Let me let me copy this, um, and I'll create my heroes heroes .json. Um, This is an array of heroes with that one hero in there. Uh, not cool, Batman. <laughs> um, and uh, I think once I have that, now I can go ahead and actually do uh, this. So if I switch to Insomnia. Um, what we want to do is we're going to change this to hero as our post request. Um, and instead of JSON for the body here, we're going to be choosing a multi-part form. Okay. And that's going to, uh, it's going to ask, it's going to lose my JSON data. That's okay. I'm going to say, okay, I'll just get rid of that there. I tried to help a little bit, but that's not very helpful. Uh, and we'll get something that looks like this key value pairs, very similar to a JSON object. Um, and we can choose, um, the, uh, the, the type of the value here, text or uh, file, which is what we're going to look at uh, in, in the next exercise. Um, so uh, we are going to add a, I think it was a name, and this is going to be uh, Batman. And we can uh, forego the quotes here because this is going to be um, text, as you can see. Um, and I can add another one, and I'm going to say cool, uh, and this is going to be uh, false. Okay. Um, great. So you can tell probably already that we're going to have to be careful with this text one uh, because uh, this is just text. There's no like Boolean like we have in JSON. So just a little bit of a trick there as well uh, to watch out for. Um, great. So we have that. Uh, what we want to do is send this off and see kind of what's in there. Uh, but there's going to be a difference with how we access this data. This is not JSON data. So I want to show you what I mean. If I click on send here, uh, I'm going to get back a 404 because we don't have anything set up yet. Uh, if I click on this timeline tab all the way over here on the right, um, beside headers and cookies, uh, let's look through this and see what happens. So we're making a post request uh, using HTTP 1.1 to this host. 
Here's a content type multi-part form data. That's pretty nice. And we have our user agent. We have a content length. Here is the actual body. This is a boundary being set up by Insomnia. Uh, it's telling it that this has a name uh, and it's a form data and the name is name uh, and it has a value of Batman. Same thing here for the next value, which is a name of cool and a value of false. Okay, so we need, you can see that this is not JSON, right? This is very, very different from JSON. We need a way to turn this into something that we can actually use like JSON on the back end, so we can actually check to see, for example, uh, is, uh, is, is like false, uh, is, is that like valid or is, is Batman valid, right? Like we can save all these different things to the actual file. So let's, let's pull up, uh, Google really quick. And I'm going to say, um, request, uh, object form, uh, data. Uh, and if we go to, uh, MDN web docs, uh, we can go to uh, request.form data method on the request object, uh, reads in the request body and returns it as a promise that resolves with a form data object. Wow. Okay. That's nice. So you can see, uh, that we can do kind of request.form data, just like that. They're using a regular promise syntax here. We can just use async await. Uh, but if we just go to the request interface in general, if you just went here, if you scrolled all the way down to where we were actually using uh, JSON, which is down here, you can see that form data is right above it. And that's exactly what we're gonna be using. So if I say um, const, uh, I'll guess, I guess I'll say body is equal to request.form data. This is gonna return a response uh, stream promise. So I'm gonna say await, uh, and then I'm gonna grab that value. Now, the, the, the tricky thing with this is that this is, uh, as we can see here, it's going to be a, uh, a promise of form data. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means. If you've seen some of the uh, DOM or the React videos, you know that we can actually loop through a form data using a form for of loop. Um, it's, we can't just log out the form data. Let me show you what I mean. So if I say console.log of this body, and I open up my terminal here, excuse me, and I switch back to uh, Insomnia and I click on send, uh, what we'll see if I switch back is uh, is, is, is kind of, we, we can log it out, but it, it's not exactly what we need. We have, uh, we have a form data object, that's what this is, and inside are the values of uh, name and Batman, okay? Um, so the nice thing about this is we can use a for of loop to loop through it, we can uh, grab data out of it. So let me show you what I mean if I switch back here. So I'll say MDN uh, form data, and uh, we can look at the form data uh, object right here. Uh, we can uh, delete values in it. We can get values out of it, for example, using the dot get on it. So that's what we have right now. We have a form data uh, object. Um, so we can grab values out of this form data object using the dot get method on this body in this case. Um, it might make more sense if I, actually, I'll leave it as body. I think that, that's that's totally fine. So um, what do we need to do now? Well, we kind of just need to turn this uh, into something that we can actually uh, save. So how do we how do we kind of go about that? Um, well, let's see what happens if we, uh, can, can we like stringify a form data uh, maybe? So like if we go back to um, our uh, Chrome here, uh, what if we say, is there any like values, set, keys, has? So these are all pretty uh, pretty interesting. Entries is used kind of in the loop. Um, what happens if we say console log of json.stringify of the body? Uh, that might work. Let's see what happens here if I uh, save that and I switch back to Insomnia and I send that off. Um, and I go back to VS Code, you can see that that doesn't really work. It's not really working as intended. Okay, so we're probably it's better to kind of create this manually. There's other ways, but I'm just gonna do this very manually so we can see how this works. I'm gonna say const name is equal to the body dot, and look at, this is the nice thing about uh, TypeScript or Dino in this case as well, and the web APIs and the standards is that you can see that this matches, everything here matches exactly what we saw in MDN because this is just a web API. This is not Dino specific, has nothing to do with Dino. This is just JavaScript, which is pretty beautiful. So we can do dot get, and we want to get the key uh, of name. And that's gonna be the name. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the um, cool. So I'm going to say const cool is equal to body.get of uh, cool. 
Now, uh, I do want to turn this into a Boolean. Uh, so I'm going to turn that into a Boolean value just like that. Um, but we, again, want to be careful that this actually is really uh, a Boolean value. We don't want to try to uh, turn like a number uh, or a string into a Boolean that might have unintended consequences. So there's some validation we want to do in, in, in kind of production. But I'll just leave it as a simple value for now. Um, all right, so let me see if this works. So I'm going to console.log out the name and cool. So I expect to see uh, some some values in there. Let, let's see what we have. So uh, if I have Batman and false and I send that over, I should probably uh, change that to something new so we don't have two Batmans in our database. But if I switch back to uh, VS Code here, look at that. We have our values, uh, the string Batman and the Boolean value of true, which is pretty awesome. Now comes the very uh, similar um, kind of saving to the saving read write and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to create a uh, const hero is equal to and I'm going to say name and uh, cool. So this is just uh, the ES6 uh, sent uh, shorthand syntax name of name cool of cool. Uh, so that's our hero that's being created. I'm going to say const file. Uh, let me just uh, turn that off so you can read this a bit better. Const file is equal to uh, await dino dot read text file of heroes dot json. I'm going to say const uh, heroes is equal to uh, json dot uh, parse of uh, file. Uh, I should probably say let in this case, and, and uh, I'll probably say let here as well, because uh, I have to add the ID here. So I'll say, um, <laughs> so uh, how do I do this? I'll just say uh, const ID is equal to math dot random math dot floor math dot random of uh, let's just say, uh, oops, times 1000. So uh, we'll just go between one and 1000 or zero and 1000 here. Um, and I'll say uh, hero is equal to the ID with the rest of the hero. Just spreading it out there just so that uh, we can have that actual uh, value in there. Object literal may only specify known properties. All right, so I think this one, this is a nice uh, heads up from <laughs> TypeScript and, you know, I guess uh, slightly annoying in this case because you could very easily do this in JavaScript. Um, I think what it's really complaining about, so there's two issues, I think. One is that this name is uh, technically not really a string yet, so it would be nice for us to really specify that. We're being a bit, uh, a bit lazy here, but I don't think that might be the issue here. I think what the issue is, um, is we need to create basically an interface for this, uh, for this hero type. Uh, but I don't really want to go down the interface route right now. I'm just going to reorder these so we can see what um, difference this makes. Um, I'm going to move the ID generation uh, up here. Uh, I'm going to uh, make, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm just going to create the hero all in one go right here with the with the ID, just so that we don't have to worry about um, resetting properties um, that weren't originally there, which is what it was complaining about. Um, okay, so uh, once we have uh, that ID, and, and if you didn't get that, don't worry about it too much. This is really just a TypeScript thing. Um, if you want to create an interface and you know how to do that, go ahead and try that out. Uh, but I'm just going to go with the simpler solution for now, just so we can get through these exercises. So we have our uh, hero created with that um, with that ID added, uh, the name and cooler in there. Um, then uh, we have our text file there. Uh, we parse the text file. Uh, I'm going to say uh, heroes is now going to equal to uh, everything that was in there uh, before uh, plus our new hero uh, added to the end there. And I'm going to save that back to the text file. So I'm going to say uh, await uh, dino dot uh, write text file. Uh, and I'm going to say the text file's name is uh, heroes dot JSON. Uh, and I'm going to say JSON dot stringify of our Heroes. Yeah, I know my head is cutting it off again. I'll just scroll down a little bit there. Uh, so uh, we are uh, reading the file. Uh, we're parsing the file, adding our hero that we just generated the ID for to the end there. I can change this back to a const, I guess, um, and uh, writing it back to the file. Once we have that, then I can uh, return back a new uh, response with that uh, json.stringify of our single hero. This is a mistake I made in, I think, the first or second exercise, uh, as well as our uh, status of 201 and our uh, headers of uh, content type uh, application slash json. 
Uh, and I think that this is supposed to be like this. Uh, where did I mess up this one? Let's see. Uh, headers. Oh, oops. This one here. There you go. String. String is not um, assignable to that one. And this is a colon there. Uh, and then I'll save that. Uh, partially nice to have TypeScript for that reason. Uh, I, I would have messed that up and had to kind of rejig it a little bit. Um, so there we go. We have um, our response sent back as a JSON string. Uh, a lot going on here again. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop into Insomnia, test this out, make sure it actually works, uh, make sure that our hero has a new hero in, inside of it, uh, and it's coming from form data. Once that works, I will actually uh, come back and explain this, uh, and I think my server is still running there just fine. So I'm going to change this from Batman. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, let's go with like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is cool. That is true. Uh, she is pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's, I think it's two words, right? Wonder Woman. Uh, and I'll click send here as a post. I should get back uh, Wonder Woman. This is a 201 uh, uh, created. I should switch back from my timeline to my preview tab. Look at that. Wonder Woman was created. ID 288. Cool is true with the name. Uh, and if I switch back to uh, VS Code in my heroes.json, uh, there, there's Wonder Woman. Um, cool is true indeed. Um, I'll add one more just for uh, for funsies. Uh, let's do uh, let's do uh, Superman. Uh, cool is true as well. Uh, and I'll click send, and there we go. We have a new ID for Superman. Now I'll switch to the timeline view really quick, just so we can see what this looks like. Um, we can see that this is the form data that's being sent. It's in this format, and that uh, dot form data on the back end here. Um, so you can see that Superman has been added. That form data here is actually built to parse that information uh, into uh, like this format that we can actually do like a get on, for example, very similar to like a map in JavaScript, like a JSON. Um, because otherwise we'd have to manually parse that string ourselves, which is really, really annoying. I think what I didn't do was show you how you could actually look at this just as text. So let me show you really quick. I'll just say a console.log. Uh, I'll just uh, log out the text uh, version of this request just so you can see what that looks like here as well. It's going to look exactly like uh, in the timeline tab. Uh, if I switch back to Insomnia here, uh, I don't know what's what's a, what's another superhero. Um, I'll just go with uh, the Monkey King. Um, Monkey King is a superhero, right? Uh, Monkey is my favorite. Um, I don't know if it has a name. Uh, I'll click on Send. <laughs> I get an error here. Um, what's the what's the issue? If I switch back here. Uh, console log. Oh, it has to be uh, awaited here. Await request.txt. Um, I just realized that uh, this is a promise of a string, uh, not an actual. Uh, so it, it tried to log out, um, I think, too late or something, or it closed the, the stream incorrectly. That's a little bit confusing, but this is a promise. Uh, let, let, let me switch back here and try that one more time. I'll click a send. Uh, oh, it still crashes. I'll go back to over here. Uh, body is already uh, consumed. Um, for my uh, over here. Okay, I mean, that's that's kind of confusing. What I'll probably do is I'll just separate this out. Maybe it doesn't like the fact that, um, oh, it's because I'm, I'm already consuming it as a form data. That That's, that's, that's I think, why. Um, so uh, that makes a lot more sense. So what, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just, for now, I'm going to get an error here, but just so you can see this work, um, I'm just going to log this out just so you can see really quick. Um, but it's going to break. So uh, if I click on send uh, and I switch back over here, what you can see is right over here is the actual text for uh, for that body um, as, as text, right? But um, we don't want it that way. We don't want to parse this. Uh, we want to use form data for that. Uh, so I'm actually going to get rid of that console log and bring back our uh, form data parsing because we're not treating it as text or JSON. We're treating it as a form data. Perfect. So uh, there you have it. That actually works quite well. Um, that was a tough one. Uh, if you got through that yourself, uh, kudos to you. Um, and uh, yeah, just keep practicing with this stuff. This is the best way to get through it. This is definitely one of the more complicated ones. Now, I couldn't resist. I had to put a bonus in here. I know this video is already super long, uh, but uh, like post requests uh, are really important. And uh, this is probably going to be one of the longer videos of the series. Uh, I really want you to get good practice with this, and I want to show you something super awesome. So I'll close this Dino you know, server here. I'll switch to this bonus exercise over here, and let's go through how this is going to work. Now, 
For this one, again, create a Dino project that you haven't already. Create an upload route using the URL pattern for slash upload for post requests. I want you to use Insomnia um, for a multi-part form. Again, just like the previous exercise, exercise three. But this time, I want you to not use text as the dropdown for the value. I want to use uh, the file dropdown or binary dropdown in this case. Okay. And then I want you to attach a file. I have uh, two files over here just so you can use them if you like, just so you can see what that looks like. Um, uh, but you can use any file you want really it doesn't really matter um, and uh, once you have that uh, you attach it to the file you'll see a choose file option in insomnia give it a name for the name field of file upload um, so the goal is to upload that file or any file frankly to the server so you can actually save it now uh, once on, on the server side you can accept that uh, request um, give uh, get the file name Okay, get the actual name of the file. So for example, these files have uh, quite long names, get those file names um, and uh, the, the content in order to save it to the disk on the server side using the submitted file name. So save it with the same name that the, uh, that the request came in with for the original file name. Um, this is very similar to a file server. Of course, there's some differences with a real file server. There's a lot of error handling and some other uh, encoding types, but this is a good start to a file server and then respond uh, with an empty 201 created in this case uh, instead of the actual content itself because it is a binary file. Um, test this in Insomnia with a few files. Uh, make sure they actually get saved correctly. You can save it in a folder if you like instead of just directly in this uh, directly in the kind of root here. Um, now some hints for you because this is quite challenging. You can use several web APIs here to help out such as the file web API uh, which is very similar to the blob API as well as the uh, uint8 array and buffer views uh, or array uh, array buffers um, so you can actually deal with things like binary data on the back end for the values of the actual uh, request okay so uh, one extra hint as well is you, you'll just like the previous one since we are using the multi-part form you are going to be wanting to use multi-part uh, or sorry form data on the request to actually get those values out of the body on the server side so again, the goal is to upload these files into the server using the same name that the client um, attached. Uh, and this is uh, gonna be saved on the server side um, and responded with a 201 if it was created. So give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. Okay, I'm gonna create a new file here. I'll call this bonus.ts. Uh, and uh, let's, let's get this set up. So I'll say async function uh, handler uh, request. This is a request. Uh, I'll say const URL is equal to request.url of new URL. And I'll say const, um, I guess, upload uh, route is equal to a new URL pattern of a path name. And the path name is going to be slash upload. Great. And uh, we want to, if the uh, request.method is equal to a reverse here is post and uh, the upload route matches with our URL then we want to save the file uh, otherwise we want to return a new response with uh, null and a status of uh, 404 okay then we're going to do dino.serve of our handler and that should be good. And I'll, and I'll close that uh, previous Dino server. I'll create a, a Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash read dash dash allow dash write. Uh, I think dash dash allow dash net and bonus.ts. Perfect. Okay, so that's started. Now, uh, what I want to do is uh, figure out kind of what this looks like, just have a kind of a lay of the land uh, for the uh, for the insomnia side, for the front end side. But before I do that, I'm just going to create another folder this time here. Uh, and I'll call this, uh, I'll just call this, uh, I guess, uh, uploads maybe. Just like that, uploads. Um, and I'll save all of my files in this uploads just so that we can differentiate from this kind of dump of files that I have here, just so we know that it really was uploaded correctly. Okay, now um, insomnia wise, if I switch over here, we're gonna, uh, we have multi-part form. I'm gonna delete this key here. Um, and I think you have to click it twice. 
Um, and if I uh, switch on or click on this little drop down here beside the value, you can see that we can change this to a file type. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change this name to uh, what did I say the name should be? Uh, I should have said that I would like the name. Oops, that's exercise three. I was like very confused as to where that oh, there you go. file upload um, in camel case there. So uh, I'll switch back to insomnia. I'll paste that in there. File upload right over there. Um, I'll switch to timeline view later just so we can see that as well. And uh, what I want to do is uh, go to localhost slash upload and I want to send off a file. So watch what happens. If I click choose file. Um, I'm going to get into uh, my folder right now that I have for, for this set of exercises. Um, and I, I don't think I can really make this bigger, but um, this is very, very tiny. I'm just going to double click on one of the files, uh, the one from Joe in this case, which is uh, from the Pexels website. Uh, I'll double click that and that's get, that gets attached uh, to, um, to this. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out why this is so confusing looking. There we go. This gets attached to um, the body. Uh, as a binary file. Okay, notice that this is a file type, not a text type, and it's given the key of file uh, upload in camel case. All right, now if I go back to VS Code, let's see what happens. I'm gonna say const body is equal to request.formData. Now, um, let's see kind of if I log this body, what happens? If I do console log of the body, um, we kind of noticed last time it was just empty. So let, let's see if I send this off, if that's still the same thing, even for a binary data. I'm going to get a 404, so it's going through the server uh, kind of route correctly. Um, switch back here. Uh, you can see that we have a, a promise pending, uh, reading a body from a connection and a file. Okay, so there's, there's some things going on with the file. Um, that's pretty interesting. I guess uh, I should have probably awaited this, so uh, I should await here. Uh, that was my mistake there. I'm trying to read the um, the promise uh, instead of using dot then in this case I'm using a wait I was trying to actually log out the promise value um, uh, and, and access it before it was actually being resolved uh, so I'll switch back to uh, insomnia here I'll send that off one more time uh, and go to VS code and we can see in this case that it, it's kind of what we had before right we had a form data object which has a few interesting things in there uh, it has the file upload key the file upload key looks like it has an object in there of type file uh, and that file type has a name, which is the name of the file, the size of the file, and then the image type of the file, or uh, the, the type of the file, in this case, an image, JPEG image. Um, okay, so uh, that's pretty interesting. So th that, that all very useful stuff that we're gonna be uh, needing to use. Uh, so how do we actually get access to this? Uh, we uh, can use the get method, right? So I can say um, uh, const, um, const file, is equal to uh, body.get uh, and in this case I want to get the file upload okay uh, which is this key right here that's going to give me this file object okay so let me take a look at what that looks like on MDN really quick if I go to Google I'm going to say file on MDN you can see that it is a web API I'll click on that the file interface is information about files, allows JavaScript uh, in a web page to access their content, in this case, Indino. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff about lists of files. A, a file object is a specific kind of blob, if you've seen that before. Um, it can be used in any context that a blob can, for example, for file reader and um, create object from URL, for example. The body option of the fetch, which is what we have right now. And you can see that there's many instance properties, which is kind of what we're seeing right there, uh, at least when it comes to the name. So we have the name of the file, we have the size of the file, um, and uh, that's coming from the blob interface. So if I click on blob uh, and I scroll down, you can see that we have the type and we have the size. And because of a prototypal, a proto typical prototypal inheritance in JavaScript, um, we have access to both the file uh, parent uh, information as well as the more specific uh, file constructor information. So that's that, that's something we're going to keep in mind uh, as well as we're doing this. So if I switch back here uh, and I say console.log of the file, let's see what happens. So um, I'll switch back to insomnia. I'll send that off 404 again. Uh, we can see that now I'm actually getting that exact file object out of there. So that's pretty nice. Notice if I do file dot, 
I actually, uh, in this case, should actually uh, grab the actual um, object out of it because this is still a form. So if we look at this, this is a form data entry of value. Um, I need to actually grab uh, the, the value out of this and let it know that it's a file. Uh, so there's a few ways I can do that in TypeScript. Uh, we'll, we'll see kind of how this goes as we go for now. Uh, but we know that this is a file. Okay, so what's the next step here? Well, we have this data, uh, but we need to grab the name of the file out of this. Ideally, we'd get the type of the file out of this as well. Um, but we also need to figure out how to actually save this file uh, to the file system. Okay, uh, so let's let's kind of see um, how we can actually kind of go uh, about this. So. Uh, one way that we can do this is we can say uh, if the file is an instance of this is one type script way we can get around this is an instance of the file type okay then we can deal with it as a file so we can do file dot and notice that now we have access to all the information that a file has as well as the blob information you can see that this is from the blob uh, this is from a file, which is name, um, which is in the proto prototype chain above it. Um, okay, so uh, we can we can grab the file name using this, and we can also uh, do other things like that array buffer that we saw earlier. So now that we have the file, we can save it using the file name, um, and um, hopefully that actually just kind of turns out uh, correctly. So uh, let's try this to start. So I'll say um, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Um, honestly, doing this kind of raw like this in uh, JavaScript or in uh, in Dino in, in JavaScript in general and TypeScript um, really takes a lot of practice. When I was putting this together, I had to look through the docs as well um, to actually get this to work uh, with the um, the buffer types and everything to match up. Um, and that just uh, is good practice to actually look through MDN. So in this case, if I go back to Google Chrome really quick. Um, uh, if, if I just go back one step to file, uh, you can see that really the file interface is mainly to give us some information about like specific file stuff, like the name, last modified. There's not really much in here uh, besides that. Um, the name is going to be important, uh, so we'll need that. But the blob interface, which it inherits from or for a prototype of, uh, is the, the one that has more information that we need. So there's a size, there's a type, uh, but there's also these instance methods. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. If we want to save this file to the file system, let's see how that's going to work. I'm going to say, I'll get rid of this const for a second. I'll say dino dot write, uh, write file. We can't do write text file because this is not a text file. This is a binary file. This is an image in this case. Uh, it could be like a, like a, uh, like a presentation file or, or like a word document or something like that right it could be anything that's not a text file so we can't use text file we have to use write file and if i open this up you can see that this takes the path um the path for the file um as well as uh the data right after that uh, okay so um how are we actually going to get this uh this information in there well the path for the file is going to be um, in my case, uploads and then with it with a slash and then the actual uh, file name. So I'm going to just kind of template string that out. I'll just do a dollar sign and I'll say uh, file dot name. So I want to grab the file name, but I want to put this in the uploads folder just like that. Um, now you got to be careful with the slashes. Technically, what you should be doing uh, is using like the um, the file APIs for the, like the file system uh, writing APIs for this. Uh, but I'm just going to do this just so it's a bit more obvious as to what you what's happening. Um, I, I I can't remember this is going to work on a PC. You might have to reverse the slash. Um, uh, but uh, this is only because I'm actually using a separate folder for my uploads. Um, if you want to make this super simple, just get rid of the uploads uh, part. Um, and maybe uh, just use the file name. You probably just have to add some um, something to the file name just so it doesn't overwrite the original file. I'm just putting this in the uploads folder specifically so that it goes in here and we can see it move from here to here when it gets uploaded. Okay, um, so what's gonna happen after this is after that we need to actually put in the, uh, after this path uh, or the URL, we need to actually put in a readable stream um, of the uh, of a type uint8 array. Okay, so what is that and how does that kind of work? So if I say I want to grab the file dot, 
uh, array buffer is going to turn this file uh, object into of type uh, into type array buffer. Uh, but uh, we need to await this. But the problem with this is that this uh, array buffer is not assignable to parameter of type uint8. So this is where things get a bit tricky when it comes to dealing with binary data uh, in programming languages, or in this case in JavaScript. Um, an array buffer is just a, a, a chunk of zeros and ones. Um, and there's no specific what's called a view into this array buffer. We need to tell JavaScript uh, that this is a bunch of what's called unsigned ints. So to split this into eight bytes uh, at a time, uh, or eight bits at a time, uh, so that uh, it knows uh, exactly uh, kind of how to format uh, this data. So if I if I show if I copy this u into eight array uh, really quick, um, and I go uh, to Google and I say u uh, into eight array uh, JavaScript, uh, you can see that this is a typed array represents an array of eight bit unsigned integers. We can construct it with the u into eight array right here. If I go to blob, if I go back to blob and I click on blob array buffer. Um, it's going to return a promise that resolves with the contents blob as a binary data contained in an array buffer. But we need to turn this array buffer into a uint8 array, um, and we can cast it um, by using the uint8 array uh, constructor. Um, I encourage you to read a little bit about how this uint8 array works, just because it is um, at least quite interesting. Uh, there are ways to kind of uh, transfer back and forth between different views. Um, in this case, again, we're going to be using the uint8 array uh, version uh, view into this, and we're going to cast it from this array buffer. So this is probably the most complex part of this, um, I guess, assignment or this uh, exercise. We're going to say new uh, uint8 array right here. Um, and I'm going to make this uh, of the array buffer. So I'm saying take that file, turn it into zeros and ones, take the, take the buffer, just the, the, the binary portion of that file, uh, grab all the zeros and ones, and then look into it as if they're eight bytes at a time, and then save that to the disk. And the reason we have to do this eight byte thing is because when we say write file on Dino specifically, it takes uh, a bunch of you into eights, uh, not just an array buffer. So that's just how this works for uh, Dino. And uh, we can turn this into different types of views, like you into uh, 32 and things like that. Uh, but in this case, you went eight is basically one character at a time, uh, or one set of addressable eight eight uh, bit uh, chunks at a time. Okay, um, and once we have that, uh, we're going to return a new uh, response, and we're just going to say that it was created status of two hundred one. And I should await this actually, just like that. Okay, so. Um, I, I have to test that this works. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to work just fine. Uh, but the main challenge here is probably this line of code. Okay, so I'm going to test that this works, then we'll come back and take a look at this and, and see uh, that um, kind of, uh, I'll, I'll explain it and see if this even makes sense as I actually test this. So if I switch back to Insomnia, moment of truth, I'll click send, uh, I get an internal server error. Uh, of course, uh, there's no such uh, file or directory uh, up uploads. Uh, oh yeah, because the dollar sign is in the wrong spot. There we go. Uh, you probably looked at me and were like, well, that's a bit weird, Nader. Why did you do that? There we go. Dollar sign, file.name, just like that. That's what I wanted to do, um, not the dollar sign at the beginning. Uh, switch back to Insomnia, click on send, get a 201 created. That's perfect. Let's actually see if that actually saved correctly for me. I'll go to my uploads. Look at that. Inside of my uploads folder, I have this uh, Joe uh, Ficar's uh, picture. And if I uh, open that up, uh, what I'll hopefully see is that really, really nice image uh, of a beach. Perfect. Um, so that actually works really nicely. And I can test that out with one more um, image if I want to. I'll do that really quick here. Uh, I'll uh, change this image to uh, this one by Halal over here. And I'll send that over. Uh, 201 created. Perfect. Go back to VS Code. You can see the names are actually showing up here with their respective sizes. Um, and uh, there's a one by Halal as well. Uh, and I think that this is just a, a nice uh, nice coffee with some treats. Um, I don't actually know the names of these. If someone knows, please let me know, but uh, that looks delicious. Uh, so there we go. Um, you can see that each of these had their respective form data objects with their file upload, which is the name that we gave it, their size, the type. And most importantly, we're actually getting the original name directly out of the file 
uh, object, which is pretty nice. So this is uh, less code, but also probably the, well, more complex when it comes to actually figuring out how to deal with these uh, array buffers and the form data object. The main purpose of this exercise was to show you that we can actually upload binary data to our server using uh, multi-part forms. Okay, notice that we use multi-part forms here uh, and we attach a file to this form. We could also attach other key value pairs that are strings, for example, alongside the file. But this is exactly, if you think about it, how pretty much every form that you use on every single website or app actually works. As you enter all the information, you can upload a file and you can submit it. And this is how it works behind the scenes. Um, so when it comes to actually how this works in code, um, hopefully this part kind of makes sense. So we're grabbing the URL and checking the pattern for post requests. We're, tr uh, we're turning it into uh, a form data object, uh, which is what we saw when we logged it out. Um, in this case, we're grabbing the file upload key, which is our actual file object. This part right here, checking for instance of file is mainly some uh, checking for TypeScript just to let Dino know and TypeScript know, hey, this is really is a file. This is not like a string or a number. So please like, let me use this as a file because it's not just a generic form entry uh, data value. And then we can actually do stuff like file.name because you can see inside of here, this is of type file, but outside of here, this is of, uh, this is of type form data. Okay, um, so we can grab the name of the file like this. Uh, we can turn it into an array buffer so we can get the actual binary value data out of it. Dino write file, that's not the text version, takes the name of the file as we'd expect, uh, plus the actual uint8 uh, array stream uh, of that data. So we had to not only grab the array buffer, which is just a, a non-viewed uh, non portion of the zeros and ones, we had to tell uh, JavaScript, please turn this into a view using uint8, which is split into chunks of eight, uh, and then pass that over to Dino's write file so that it can take those chunks one at a time and, and kind of write them to this file. If that all works out, we do send back a 201, otherwise we send back a 404. So definitely quite challenging, even though it was less code, there's a lot going on. But if you got through to this part, good job. It was a lot of fun putting these together. Honestly, if you can get past to this point, even if you have to rewatch just a bunch of times, this is really the crux of what it means to create a REST API. Of course, there's validation, there's the other methods, but it really is this cycle of the client talking to the server, getting or changing information uh, and getting back a response. And some things can go wrong in the middle there. We have to deal with them uh, as the programmers of the backend, uh, but really that is how it works. In this case, this is ready uh, for the most part. Uh, for example, like it, this could this this uh, client could be anything. It could be a website, uh, like like a front end website built in JavaScript in the DOM. It could be a React or a Vue website. It could even be a, an app. It could be a watch. It could be anything. It doesn't matter as long as that thing is sending that data in a standardized way, which is. Uh, pretty much how most of the libraries for whatever language is being used work. Uh, if we can grab that as a form data binary object, we can then translate it in this case on the back end into something that we can work with. Uh, in this case, we're using Dino, but in any other language, it would work very, very similarly. Okay. Oof, that was probably one of the longer videos, but I couldn't resist putting all this in there for you. I hope that uh, I hope that you enjoyed it and it wasn't too frustrating to kind of sit through this and work through these exercises. Um, I hope you had fun. Um, if you liked the video, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I also have a Patreon set up as well as YouTube memberships and super thanks. So you can uh, contribute that way if you so desire. That would be wonderful if you could do that. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought of this set of exercises and uh, kind of uh, any challenges you had along the way. Uh, what we're gonna do in the next video together is go through the next uh, set of methods, which is the put and patch requests. Uh, and I'm gonna put those together because they're very similar. Uh, but really, once you have this idea of a post request down, I encourage you to really practice this over and over again a few times and change stuff around. Uh, all the rest of the stuff is gonna fall into place. Uh, put and patch is really just uh, kind of building on this idea of posts. It's actually almost the exact same thing, um, just with some small minor differences. So I can't wait to get to that video. I will see you there.